Today we are talking all about vowels, how to write them, what you should be thinking about, what to do if you're nervous about them. I'm talking with Melissa from The Art of Etiquette and she has so many great tips on how to make your vowels perfect on your wedding day. Hi, I'm John from PGP Wedding Films, and welcome to Say Yes to the Best, where we talk to the best wedding pros to give you wedding planning advice. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We have new content out all the time to help you with your wedding planning. Today, I'm talking with Melissa Trojak of Art of Etiquette. They make incredible heirloom legacy vow books for you to, you know, be able to remember such an important part of your wedding day forever. Um, so I'm going to introduce her in a second, but she's going to have a discount code for all of you. So check that out in the description below. You cannot do better. It will absolutely look amazing. I can tell you that as someone who's going to be filming, I love seeing a beautiful vow book versus, you know, a piece of paper. So Melissa, how are you? I'm great. I really am grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on is you had a really, really amazing series on your Instagram about how to write incredible vows, which I think, you know, I talk to almost all of my couples about the vows because a lot of times in my, my films, personal vows make or break the film because it, it's how I get their personalities in there. So I, I saw that and I immediately thought, this is amazing. I need to let everybody know all about this. But before we get into that, could you just tell us a little bit about the art of etiquette? Yeah, so the Art of Etiquette's been around for a few years. We've seen a couple evolutions, but we, I think we've really found our niche over the last uh, 12 to 18 months where we're really focused on preserving that legacy and that heirloom moment. Um, and right now we've started out on the wedding day as you start that journey together. Um, but we are going to be evolving into guest books and anniversary books this year. So we're super excited about that. So stay tuned. Um, and then we're evolving into baby and um, birthdays. But at the heart of it, what you're finding is that we're giving couples, people, a very easy way to preserve what matters most. And I think after being through COVID last year, and we're still in it this year for all intents and purposes, um, how do we do that? How do we slow down the day that is a blur? I think we hear that quote quite a bit, that the day goes by so quickly. Um, how do we slow time down and how do we preserve it? And that's really the intention of the art of etiquette. And what you'll find also, everything that we design, um, I design it so that it doesn't end up in a Tupperware container with all the other things that you felt were so important for your wedding when you were planning them. Um, and then how do you keep that as a, a, it's beautiful enough to be in your home, right? And be a part of you and remind you of your North Star. So every product has this moment of beauty um, that lives beyond the moment. Um, and also we have this beautiful surprise and delight quality in the products as well that keep people wanting to pull them off the bookcases and looking at them year after year. So it's a little bit about our journey, but we're really super excited that we can help couples find an easy way to do something that feels really intimidating, but be so happy that they did it. First of all, why do you think it's so important for couples to write their own vows versus doing something more generic or traditional? I think it's the best moment of the day, right? Like for me, um, sure, you want to see the dress and you see the, the, you know, what theme they picked and how it all came together and just the beauty of it. But really hearing someone's heart um, out there and what makes them so special and what makes them a couple. Um, I know at my wedding, we even took it a step further and we infused a lot of that story into our programs that we printed about why we picked the locations that we picked and, and why it was so special. I think I also had the gift of a second time around and I think that's when it became clear. I've done it both ways. Um, so I, I've lived in the first marriage where we just took it right off the shelf and we're like, yeah, that feels good enough. Like you all were really excited just to get to the party or maybe your nerves, you're like, I don't wanna say all that in front of all these people. And then the gift of the second time around is you really understand what's important. And you really understand that the wedding is a beautiful party, but it's the marriage. And I really just encourage couples to think about that. And it's not much, right? It's it's a few hundred words, three minutes, you know, it's not that long, but if you can't get over that because you just hate speaking in public, which is of course one of the, the most, the top fears on people's lists along with being embarrassed or, you know, um, 
it's just do it as a first look. We've been seeing a lot of people use that first look moment because that's just between the two of you. And these vows really are between the two of you, right? Um, you use your family and friends as support as, as you fall through those more challenging times, but those words are really sacred to the two of you, right? Um, so if you feel like you can't get over that moment of being in front of all of these people, um, or maybe you're not gonna be clever enough and you're trying to make sure that, you're trying to do two things at once, say what's on your heart, but also you want someone to come up after and say, oh, those were so great, you know, thanks for writing those vows. That first look is such a beautiful, intimate moment that's already being captured by your videographer and your photographer, right? So you'll have it and it doesn't matter who's behind you, it just matters who's in front of you, right? As you exchange those words. So I know that it's a tough moment when you think about, ooh, do I or don't I write those vows, but I haven't regretted it. And what I love is that they're preserved in books or however you choose to preserve them um, and we can pull them out. And what's really cool is the first year anniversary is the first year pay is um, the celebration of paper. And you pull out those vow books um, and you just revisit those words. And they, like I said, they serve as this North Star that's quietly sitting in your home, but always there as a reminder. So uh, take the leap. I mean, you mentioned the 10 day writing challenge in the beginning. I think when I set out to design the product, I also designed how do we overcome some of the objections for people that really want to do it but are too scared or too intimidated by the process. We don't just ship a product. We have lots of resources on the website. We have tips on our blog. We even ship the product with a tips booklet um, to help you break down the process. And as you mentioned, we just launched our 10 day writing challenge. For those of you that need a little bit of extra help with a timeline to keep you focused, um, you can use that 10 days to keep you motivated and heading in the right direction. Um, and a little surprise in that 10 day writing challenge, it's not a full 10 days. We give you a couple days to breathe and just kind of ruminate on the words. Um, so it's not 10 days of heavy lifting, I promise you. It's it's 20 to 30 minutes a day. Talking a little bit about the, the challenge, you know, I encourage everybody to head over to your Instagram. That's gonna be linked in the description below, but what, what are kind of the cliff notes of, you know, what, what they need to do? What are some of the, the major steps that they have to take to, to really focus on their vows and, and make them something great? I think it starts with intention. Um, it starts with, okay, on day one, it's like, okay, how do you think about that big picture, right? Do you want to be romantic, sentimental, funny? You know, what's the tone of your day? You know, many marriages, which I love and, and, and the way that we embrace them all, here at the Art of Etiquette is they're coming in many shapes and sizes and colors, right? And families look different. Um, and I know I brought children into the second marriage, so now maybe I, I was really wanting to bring in that family focus into my vows. There's a lot of beautiful cultural elements that people want to include moving forward. So really sitting down for about, I think I said 20 minutes to be, what is the intention, right? What do we want to serve as our North Star as the base of it? And then from there, you kind of ratchet up, right? Then you start going through a series of questions to kind of help you really solidify a couple key points in those, you know, roughly 400 to 500 words, again, three minutes. Um, and then we give you an outline, like how do you take all those answers from those questions and we put it into an outline. And then from there, you're starting to work your first draft. So you see, we're starting wide and we're, we're getting very narrow, um, but we take you very big as what do you want foundationally these vows to be in terms of the feeling of them? What are some special memories? We catalog those. How do we put them against an outline? And then how do we start that messy first draft? And I think that's where people choke a little bit because it's like, ooh, now I got to put a full sentence down on paper and have it flow into the next sentence. But do the messy first draft, like get out paper, or however you work best, the computer paper, and just have at it. Don't edit yourself. You'll get to that point later. Um, so after you get the first draft, we give you two days to pause. So it's not, like I said, a full 10 days. And then you come back and then with fresh eyes and having just thought about things, I think a lot in the shower, don't ask me why. Some people think on walks, some people, you know, like to talk it out. They come back to that first draft, they mark it up, they move things around, and then they really start to solidify it. Um, we even say, hey, if you need the help, share it with a friend, you know, share it with someone really close to you. Um, especially if you're going to be sharing inside jokes, you know, is that really important to you? Again, the first look is perfect for that. You know, if you wanted to be funny, testing that out a little bit with somebody. Um, and your officiant is a wonderful resource 
throughout the day um, as you're planning this, you know, to sit down and go, hey, what do you think? Particularly the officiant is, is super helpful. And if you want to really infuse some of that faith-based moments into it, you know, really leverage the officiant as your best friend as well. And then we're polishing it, we're finalizing it. And then the last step is super important. Um, we're asking you to practice. So um, many times I know I've done a lot of public speaking, you write it down and then you start to say it and then you start, you feel like, oh, I tripped over that word a little bit or I missed this point. Um, so really just spending a few moments saying the words out loud for you to get that rhythm and that cadence is super important. And then I think then the biggest tip then next is if you know that you're still gonna have jitters, give a copy to your officiant or whoever, you know, who's, who's helping with your ceremony. Um, and I know this is one of our regrets and I dismissed it. And I know you're gonna say, absolutely, um, mic yourselves. And it doesn't have to be a handheld because I know that can be detracting from the photos. They make the lapels in a couple different neutral colors, right, the lapel mics. Um, we didn't do that and we had an outdoor wedding and I dismissed it because I speak in public a lot, my husband does, we have big voices and we're like, our voices are gonna carry, It's we don't need to spend the money. Um, and I look back now and I think, it doesn't matter how big your voice is when you're competing with being outside, you quickly get you know swallowed up in the space, um, no matter how big you think your voice is. So I think that's a really important consideration as well. You spent so much time writing them, you want people to hear them. Um, so. I would just as a pitch on on for you as well <laughs> to help out when your clients are like, do I, don't I? And the answer is yes, do it. <laughs> and um, the work won't be lost. I remember I was doing a wedding in South Carolina and it was outdoors. And for whatever reason, they had the guests really far away from the bridal party. Uh, and they, I mean, pre-COVID. And I remember I knew the mother of the groom and she, afterwards she came up to me. She's like, Could, were you able to hear that? Cause I couldn't hear a thing. And I was like, I heard it crystal clear. Um, so yeah, I mean, especially when you're saying those important words, being able to you know hear them back is is obviously something I believe a lot in. Yeah, and like I said, we dismissed it, and I'm and it's one of the regrets that I have from the day that I wish we didn't. Um, we have them written down, but you know our guests couldn't really be a part of it as much as we wanted to. So just something to think about. <laughs> Earlier, you mentioned some that people have roadblocks when it comes to committing to writing their own vows. What are some of those roadblocks that you kind of hear a lot, you, you see a lot? I think time is a big one. You know, um, I think it's so easy when you get that, that checklist, that 12 to 18 month checklist that every magazine publishes, right? Um, the wedding vow, the ceremony sits very quietly toward the end. And that's on top of seating charts. And do you have all the gifts for the, the rehearsal dinner and, you know, the travel arrangements and logistics. And especially with destination weddings, you're planning an event beyond just the day, like you're wrapping so much around it. So I think where vow writing comes in falls in a very congested moment in that planning process. I mean, I think in the beginning, there's this, when you first get engaged, you have all this activity, the videographer, the photographer, the venue, um, you, you line up the officiant, but you don't really kick that, that process into gear and toward the end, right? So I think time is a big hurdle. So I think that's why we say, if you can allow two months um, to write it, you know, if, you know, we can do it in 10 days, you can do it in a day, you know, it's really up to you, but to be thoughtful and to not feel pressured, um, two months is a gauge that we use and, and when I recommend it to people. I think, like I mentioned, fear is a big one, you know, getting up that public speaking moment, people sadly would rather die than be up in front of people. Um, and they just want to get through it. They want to get to the cocktail hour. They want to, you know, get to their family and friends. They're excited. Um, so I think fear is a big one. I think they don't feel they're creative enough, you know, like is what I have to say special enough. Um, and I, what I love is seeing it done so many different ways that everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a story to tell and how they met. Um, and what makes them special. No two people are the same. And I think that's what guests really enjoy understanding and appreciating. So I think it comes out in your day and the decisions you've made and how you've decided to plan your day, the colors, the events, the music you chose, the ambiance that you set. But when you speak those words, they understand your core in a way that they couldn't understand. So if people can just give themselves a little bit more time understand that you have your officiant a vow book or a piece of you know i know you and i shudder a little bit on a piece of paper because it quickly gets crumpled when you're nervous and worse yet a phone don't do the phone 
don't do the phone. Uh, Something always goes wrong. The sun glare, you're scrolling. It's and as you know, you're like, it doesn't make for a good picture. Um, and, and that's a really sacred moment up at the altar. Um, if you give yourself a little bit of time, we give you the tips and guides to get you through some of those those early moments. There's also great people um, I, I, I partner with from time to time. Tanya at the Vow Whisperer. Um, you know, they're, they're people that can help you smooth over the words too, if you really want that extra little juice in there. Um, and then know that the books are crutch. You know, that's why we did the books. You know, my husband and I, you know, like I said, we public speak all the time. We have to get up in front of everyone, but we knew we were gonna be too nervous you know, doing it. And we knew the feeling of the day and you want that feeling to kind of come over you and, and be present. So um, having it written down is just a wonderful way to get over some of that anxiety and have it there in front of you, right? Um, and then don't worry if it's witty enough or if it's special enough. It's only supposed to be for the person standing in front of you, right, at the end of the day. Um, the rest are along for the ride and they're just excited and they're to, to hear it no matter what it looks like. Um, so I think those are the three big factors um, in that. And sometimes another limitation I, um, is certain ceremonies, right? Um, I've heard, you know, the Greek ceremonies, the Catholic ceremonies, you know, to really um, embrace them in their, in their beautiful state, right? They have a structure to them, right? And you can't deviate too much from that. And, and that's beautiful. So I would say, hey, if you really want to have that moment of speaking what's on your heart and adding a little extra oomph to the day, you know, a little extra pizzazz and meaning, use the first look um, if you're going to do a first look and then you've got this beautiful extension to the ceremony without all of the other considerations of being in front of people like i said if you want it to be more intimate i agree with that completely my wife and i we did a catholic ceremony i don't think we would have changed that but i i definitely especially now that i'm i'm really into it and i hear so many great uh vows and letter readings and i really wish we had done something like that because with our mass we weren't allowed to do anything personal and one thing that i always tell my couples when we're talking about you know the video is you know that might be the only time you actually like publicly speak throughout the entire day you know a lot of our films are built around the speeches and and those little moments but as far as your voice which i think is one of the big reasons to have someone like me at your wedding is so you can hear the way you sound right now you know it's not this you know we can use the generic vows but it's not the same thing as something personal so I, I agree with everything you said. And one thing that I always try to tell people is just don't, you mentioned don't be too witty. Don't, I, don't try to be a poet if you're not a poet. Right, be that's, you. That's who they're marrying, uh, yeah. Be who you are. It, it, it's going to sound natural and, and you're not going to have to work so hard because you're just being yourself. And being yourself is all that you need. And I think the tip, you know, a little tips of the trade and, and the tricks that you'll pull, right, is is it's not, the camera's not always on you as you're speaking, right? You have this beautiful voiceover, right? That overlays throughout your video of that letter or the vows themselves, right? Like, oh, that's like, that's the secret sauce, right? You know, I think that moment along with watching the groom's face at the partner's face at the altar when the other is coming down the aisle is my favorite and then hearing their words, right? And that all is just, it's all based on feeling, right? It's, it's the day being the day and it's not planned, you know, like, and you spent 12 to 18 months planning every moment, and those are some of the few moments you can't plan for that are super exciting and make the day the day. Art of Etiquette, you obviously create vow books where you know, couples can write down all of these amazing things. Why do you feel like it's so important to have a, a book like yours or, or the various books that you guys produce for that moment versus, like you said, the piece of paper, the cell phone? <laughs> iPad. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were very intentional. We wanted something of, of high quality. We realized um, that these books are meant to be passed down. They're meant to be handled. They're meant to, to be survived many generations. So we very much wanted to make sure the quality of the materials were, were there from the get-go. And, and we purposely right now are doing only small batches, right? Um, we're not, while they're being produced, they're being done in very small batches to control the quality because that's something I really believe in. These people, these are to, to live on and I want them to stand the test of time. Um, that, I think it's so cool to have those books, not only for the words, but for the handwriting too. And I know that's another, I could say that's another objection where people get choked up a little bit is 
like, oh, my handwriting's not good enough, or I don't want to put, you know, pen to paper. I mean, I'm one of these ridiculous people when I buy that that planner for the beginning of the year, and yes, I prefer still a paper planner. <laughs> I guess that's not a surprise given what I do. But the first time I like put pen to paper, I'm like, oh, I've messed it up. And and I'm I'm in the field of stationery and 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 keepsakes. But that's what makes it special, you know. I often say I have all these gorgeous photographs of my grandparents' wedding day. I don't know really what that day meant other than seeing their smiles on their face and how it was captured. And at that point it was only still, so no video, no, you know, interaction. And I'm like, wouldn't I, I have her handwriting on the back if she would, you know, write a note about that on the photograph. But I'm like, wow, how cool would it have been had I had a copy of their vows, right? And something that was meant to be displayed in my home. And um, we show on the site, you know, how these can be beautifully staged on bookcases, on end tables. Um, and I think what's also cool about what we do, which is a slight differentiator, um, there are many beautiful books, but I, like I said, I wanted you to feel compelled if you weren't already to pull it off the shelf. And particularly on the first anniversary, this is where that surprise and delight comes in. On the eve of your wedding or the week leading up to, I know again, it's a super busy week, we ask you to write a little love note to each other and it's not a big love note so don't feel like you have to fill tons of paper sheets of paper it's just a little thing that tucks in your vow book and you pull it off the shelf on your first anniversary and you read that love letter you know so what a great moment again of stopping time and creating a time capsule for yourself and then having a moment to celebrate and pulling it off the shelf so um we think there's lots of intention and reasons to keep coming back to that book. And we're very deliberate in the first year and, and saying, hey, pull this off the shelf. There's something really special inside for you. Um, so that's why I think it makes it even more special if you can commit it to paper um, in a way that is meant to be preserved and, and not easily lost you know, as you're cleaning up from the wedding day and someone can scoop up those notes that were sitting on your table. <laughs> um, we've had it happen with our toasts and we're like, ah, it's gone, you know? <laughs> and you have to go back and, and if you have video, you can kind of transcribe it, which is awesome. We didn't, so another regret. Um, so again, I just think it's that intention and, and, and having that become a part of your life as to why I think it's so important to, to, to get through those objections and everyone, it's interesting, you'll see that we have testimonials on the site and through my Instagram posts. Everyone that's like been through the journey has been really super excited at what they got on the day and so glad that they have it ongoing in their lives. So um, there is a payoff, I promise, to those that are considering doing it. If there was just one thing you could say to a couple, they're on the fence, they're not sure, what is one thing you would say to every couple before you know deciding about their vows? Do it. <laughs> like, I promise you everything that I've outlined as to why people don't do it, um, just do it. And that's why we've tried to create, if you go to the resources section, I give a lot away uh, for free because I believe so much in it. And I, I guess I wish for them, I, I wish for everyone that they only get married once, of course. <laughs> um, but the perspective I've gotten by having done it twice is that this is what matters, like hands down. like. I had a lot, a lot of fun picking colors and testing and testing cake and, and, and having fun with my photographers and doing those engagement shoots and, and talking about the event itself and planning all the activities. But I am so super excited having been through with this gift of perspective that this is why we did it and this is how we did it. And I'm glad that we have this as a North Star. Um, so if you're rooted in, in family and in tradition and the romance of being able to pass on your words to your future generations, to your children, to others in your lineage, like this is a beautiful way to do that, hands down. I'm super excited um, that people are even here listening and considering it. Um, you, I'm always available as well. Please feel free to, to DM me. Um, if you'd like more information on, on, on Tanya, the Val Whisperer, um, please check her out as well. Um, and and, and um, we're here for you. Um, I, I very much believe in the journey. Um, we're excited about the, the products that are coming out next. 
Um, lots of surprise and delight are built into those. Um, we are not, you can see that we're teasing it out on the website now. We are not your average guest book. Um, and um, I'm not just saying that <laughs> and I'm not just biased. Um, there's gonna be a beautiful way that your guests are also now a part of your day beyond just a signature and a Polaroid. And we're really excited to bring that to life as well. So do it, you know, when you say, what should we tell couples? embrace it um, take the 10-day challenge reach out to me if you need any help here for moral support as well and just enjoy it this will be just a, another way that you look back and go wow what a great day you know that that we had melissa from the art of etiquette all of her information is going to be below in addition to the 10-day challenge on instagram she has lots of free resources so go check her out and also like i mentioned at the top there's going to be a discount code so if you're looking for that great vow book definitely check that out. And I know there are a lot of vendors who watch this as well. So if you're looking for a way to send a gift to a couple, a vow book is a beautiful way to do that. And I know Melissa has some wholesale options. So reach out to her as well if you're interested in that. Yes, thank you. Yes, and for those wedding professionals, um, that surprise and delight moment on your customer journey, feel free to email me, uh, Melissa at The Art of Etiquette. Um, also DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to get you that information as well. Well, thank you again. And thank you for watching Say Yes to the Best. As I mentioned at the top, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. We have new content out all the time to help you navigate your wedding planning. Thank you again and happy planning.